This is a video about the concept of transpulmonary pressure and its importance in titrating PEEP. Esophageal pressure monitoring balloons have found multiple uses in ventilated patients in recent years, and some newer ventilators even integrate the esophageal pressure waveform into the display. We will review this concept and discuss its use in titrating PEEP. Esophageal balloon-guided PEEP titration has been shown to provide a benefit in oxygenation, as well as a signal for reduction of mortality. Results of a larger EPVENT2 trial powered to review outcomes should become available sometime in 2018. The purpose of PEEP is to create a minimum pressure to keep open the half billion alveolar sacs that make up the lung. PEEP is measured as a gauge pressure between airway opening and the atmosphere at end expiration when it reflects the true pressure of the alveoli and not the resistance of the airways. On the alveolar side, this pressure is the sum of the transpulmonary pressure between the alveolus and the pleural space and the transthoracic pressure between the pleural space and the atmosphere. The pressure measured by the ventilator at the airway opening has no way of discerning between these two components. Why is this important? The alveolus must remain open to perform gas exchange. It should do so as long as the pressure within the alveolus at end expiration remains greater than the pressure within the pleural space. If the pressure in the pleural space becomes greater than that in the alveolus, it will collapse, resulting in atelectasis. Various disease states such as pulmonary edema, or ARDS, can increase the pressure needed to inflate the alveolus, while other conditions, such as obesity, can cause high pleural pressures by increasing the rigidity of the thoracic cage. Conversely, the pressure inside the alveolus must not be allowed to get so great that it causes it to become strained or rupture, causing a pneumothorax. Historically, avoiding this meant keeping the plateau pressure, as measured at the airway opening, less than 30 centimeters of water. As described above, however, the pressure at the airway opening is deceiving, since it is only the transpulmonary component that poses a danger to the alveolus. In fact, the strong contraction of thoracic muscles needed to play some wind instruments easily exceeds 100 centimeters of water with no damage to the lung since the transpulmonary pressure does not increase. Measuring the pressure in the pleural space would allow selective titration of transpulmonary pressure to overcome these collapsing forces while keeping it safe from rupture. But how? Fortunately, there is already a conduit enabling insertion of a measuring device conveniently located adjacent to the pleural space with easy access to clinicians. It's the esophagus. Placement of a pressure monitoring device in this spot allows an accurate measurement of the pleural pressure and enables real-time calculation of the vital transpulmonary component. Ready to try it out? Let's create a scenario. Your patient is a 43-year-old woman who is 5 foot 4 and weighs 260 pounds. She is admitted with septic shock due to bilateral pneumonia, possibly ARDS. She is receiving mechanical ventilation with 100% inspired oxygen, a PEEP of 12, a respiratory rate of 24, and a tidal volume of 420. Despite this, her oxygen saturation is only 87%. You ensure sedation and consider paralysis to avoid having intrinsic contraction of the breathing muscles interfere with your measurements. Then, assemble and insert the esophageal balloon according to the supplied manufacturer instructions and open the calculator that we created to simplify measurements by scanning the QR code shown above. This calculator helps with unit conversion since ventilator pressure is measured in centimeters of water, whereas esophageal pressure on the bedside monitor is transduced in millimeters of mercury, and it will calculate transpulmonary pressure by subtracting pressure measured by the esophageal balloon from that at the airway opening. Now let's determine the minimum PEEP necessary to keep transpulmonary pressure above zero at end expiration in order to overcome collapsing forces resulting in atelectasis. We're going to do this by pressing the EXP hold button on the ventilator and setting slider 2 on the calculator to the pressure measured by the ventilator and slider 3 to the transduced esophageal pressure shown on the bedside monitor. Note in this case, the end expiratory transpulmonary pressure is still less than zero. Increase PEEP in increments of 2 and repeat measurements until end expiratory transpulmonary pressure is between 0 and 10. In this case, the minimum PEEP required is 28. Then let's determine if this PEEP is safe by checking the transpulmonary plateau pressure at end inspiration. Press the INSP hold button and set slider 4 to the end inspiratory pressure shown on the ventilator and slider 5 to the esophageal pressure shown on the bedside monitor. Make sure the end inspiratory transpulmonary pressure is less than 20. 
PEEP is now optimized. You should see an improvement in oxygenation with a corresponding change in imaging.